There was a meeting in February almost a century and a half ago that was largely responsible for British Columbia becoming part of Canada. It is filled with strife and discord and yet it managed to set the course for the province of BC. Bruce Kirkpatrick reports. In 1869, fresh from Newfoundland and Ottawa, the newly arrived governor, Anthony Musgrave, went to Barkerville to find out what local views were towards B.C. joining Canada. Gold was running out, people were leaving B.C., the economy suffering. Could Ottawa help? There was a push for B.C. to join Canada, but B.C. Attorney General Henry Creese didn't think so. He was concerned that the Canadians would start changing the court system. He didn't really want to join, he wanted to stay a British colony. He actually referred to Canadians as North American Chinamen, no better than Yankeedom. Regardless, Crease helped draft BC's constitutional requirements, which were typeset and taken to Ottawa. These are the Executive Council minutes. The minutes of a gathering in Victoria 143 years ago detail an agreement that changed BC forever. On February 9, 1870, at Government House, John Helmkin, Robert Carroll, and B.C. Commissioner of Lands Joseph Trutch met with the Executive Council to finalize the terms British Columbia wanted to join Confederation. The negotiations in the province were difficult, getting everybody on side. Uh, the governor had a broken leg and was laid up in bed. Uh, there were different views. Even his attorney general would rather stay a British colony. Despite the significance of B.C. joining Canada, only one B.C. representative even met Prime Minister John A. Macdonald. The meeting lasted just 15 minutes with Dr. John Carroll. So these are the proposed terms of confederation. The deal went through involving tax transfers, pensions, the courts, transportation, mail, and more than anything else, a railway connecting B.C. with the rest of the nation and the Navy. So the federal government agreed to build a dry dock in Esquimalt and to undertake the cost of constructing lighthouses and customs buildings and public works generally. Many of those things are still with us today. Thanks to a small meeting February 9, 1870, British Columbia joined Confederation July 20, 1871, becoming part of the Dominion of Canada. It was celebrated by photos of Helmkin and Carroll in Ottawa at Niagara Falls. But in fact, they never really visited Niagara Falls, so this photo was photoshopped in 1870. It's a tourist souvenir of their visit to the capital. As for tracks across the nation, that took a little longer. The first train didn't pass through Port Moody until 1886, finally linking east with west. This Week in History, brought to you by the Royal BC Museum, bringing British Columbia stories together.